Hello and welcome to Tarmac. I'm Dave. I'm Matthew and despite the conditions here, I'm feeling particularly excited because behind us we've got the hottest new Maserati. It's the Grecale Trofeo. That's right, we came to one of the windiest places in New Zealand to show off the Grecale, which is actually named after a Mediterranean wind. Come, let's take a look at this. Now, I was going to say hot on the heels of the Levante, but the uh, Levante has been around since 2016. But in the same vein, and actually in the same vein as since the 1960s, the Maserati is, or the Maserati Grecale has actually been named, like I said, after some Mediterranean winds. Some, I don't know why they make winds famous, but anyway, there you go. The Grecale is basically a little bit smaller than the Levante, although it is a reasonable big sized SUV and it does come in three separate models here in the New Zealand right now there's the GT the Modena and this one the Trofeo there is an EV model on the way but uh, this is the top of the range and this is the one we really sh wanted to get our hands on to show you looking around the front here it's got such a lovely shapely nose look at that it's just so good and so dominant and also being as it's the trofeo the nose is actually extended a little bit out here around the grill the grill itself is unmistakably a um, maserati grill and actually the badge has been changed a little bit because it's now sporting the new modern badge the Trident here is basically where there's a few bits of the technological gubbins behind there, but again, unmistakable from there. And the lights here, which are LEDs, also come with the MC20 or their MC20 inspired, so particularly around by the, uh, the DRLs. Being the Trofeo, there's plenty of extra wind or vents to come through. I've got this wind thing going on. And also this front uh, splitter here is, is basically is uh, carbon fiber. So lots going on around the nose and so it should be. Oh, the other thing that I forgot to mention is this bit here. This is called the, the Angulo or something like that, which is supposed to mimic exactly the dangly bit that goes down the deck of your throat here. May sound a bit odd, but this bit here is that bit there anyway there's more of those around the side so let's go there dimensionally this uh this grecale is 4.85 meters long and 1.67 in height so essentially it is quite i was going to say long and short and stuff but i don't know i get all school confused when it comes to width and heights because well obviously anyway what we've got is 21 inch feet which uh this this model comes with as standard and also look more of these ugolas so there's ugolas for everyone also comes with six pot uh, brakes up here so making sure that it will stop and it really does stop very well the it comes with these three vents here which is basically a trademark maserati since 1947 and this is where you'll find out what model you've got as i say we've got the trofeo otherwise you'd have the gt or modena so anyway so you know that the the sills down here are carbon fiber and also slightly extended which is cool and also the door handles it's kind of a funny feeling you sort of you sort of just it's like a button inside here rather than a pulley handle uh, anyway it does work works well actually for, for both of them and as you slowly go back here the hexagonal uh, C pillar is uh, comes with the trident as well look it's a good looking side good looking front so we might as well look around the rear. What we have at the back here is a reasonably small uh, roofline spoiler and a reasonably large uh, rear windscreen. The tail lights here are LEDs and they're inspired by the Jugari or something like that 3200 GT. So again, nostalgic Maserati people are going to love this. They're a sort of boomerang shape and they look pretty cool. Obviously got the Grecale badging, your Maserati badging and also your rear splitter here is uh, also carbon fibre because this is the Trofeo. Once you open up the tail what you've got here is 570 litres of trunk space, which is actually more than your Modena or the um, GT because they actually have a little bit of an electrical sort of component to it. And there is actually, as I said before, a full uh, battery version coming or a PHEV version coming later. 
The other thing is, look at these quad pipes. Lovely, really good. They make a terrific noise once you are really revving up and changing gear. And that actually is all linked to what's under the bonnet. So let's go there. Now what we have here is a 3 litre V6 twin turboed engine made into an 8 speed gearbox. It's also in the Tuno engine and it's easy to say that this is straight out of an MC20 because effectively it is. But this comes with a few party tricks. One is the fact that it's got a wet sump rather than a dry sump. And also it, whenever it's coasting it'll actually shut off um, half of the, uh, the cylinders. So it is actually far more efficient although we haven't managed to get it to be that efficient. I I think we're sitting around the 20 liters per 100 kilometers but anyway when you are kicking it and making it go fast it has 385 kilowatts of power and 620 newton meters of torque that is a monstrous amount for a essentially a family vehicle anyway the other thing is matthew's very excited about this big brace across here because it makes it very stiff and all that sort of stuff so i guess we speaking of stiff matthew's inside and he'll show you what's going on in there now, speaking of stiffness, yes, the ride of this car is on the harder side, but we will get to that on the driving bit. So, it's just as well that you've got some nice soft leather seats in here. Uh, they are also hand-stitched, of course, in traditional Maserati fashion, and they just feel really lovely to touch and to sit in. I mean, the bolstering is, is nice, the contrast stitching looks really good, the headrests are really soft, which is excellent for when you're being flung backwards trying to test out the notch a hundred times material wise everything is generally quite soft and luxurious starting from the top of the dash where you have some soft touch materials there further down some more and then it just keeps going with the plastics below as well having a, a slightly softer touch to them not quite scratchy but not quite um plush either one thing i have to bring up though is the fact that this car comes with the 14 speaker Sonos Faber audio system and the speaker panels actually on the doors are cut with a laser so they are really precise in terms of their looks but again I will give you a health warning there because if you run your finger over them you might end up cutting yourself or you know trimming your nails whichever one you want because they are quite harsh to the touch but that is really the only thing that's harsh to the, harsh to the touch in this interior. You also get an open weave sort of material on the door panels and there's more of it on the center console here where you have space for a wireless phone charger hidden under there. You get a storage compartment in here with two USB ports, one C and one A. Close that, you also get two large cup holders which are quite deep as well going down the middle here. And of course a nice generous central armrest storage space which hides the space for your key which also comes with like a Maserati sheet sort of thing as well to protect it. So how precious is that? Pop that back in and I think it's time that we take a look at the technology side of things. Now this central panel here is made up of two screens as you can see. You've got a 12.3 inch infotainment screen over here and then below that an 8.8 .8 inch screen to control your air conditioning and also your clock which I'll get to in a bit. First to take a look at this infotainment screen now it's as I said before 12.3 inches wide you've got this bar on the left which is your shortcuts and then you've got this is the home display here with your audio input and your technical gauges note the torque and the turbo gauge as well uh, because of course this is very much a performance oriented car now if I head down here I can actually swipe down and bring up a whole bunch of other menus as well including the surround 360 degree camera, external temperature and my uh, wireless charging menu as well if I so want that. Close that and I'll draw your attention to the left side here and in particular this little Maserati Grecale icon there because if I touch that it brings up the vehicle menu. So the first one is my car which shows you your service interval and then you can dial into your tire pressures, oil levels and the most interesting one which is the drive mode explorer. Click on that and it shows you a map of the different drive modes that the Grecale has on offer. So if I click into comfort you'll notice how this changes in terms of its priorities there. Favoring efficiency and electronic controls. GT is a little more 
towards the responsiveness side and then sport and corsa obviously increase the acceleration and stiffness to various degrees degrees so really cool to have this map and this sort of interaction with the car there heading back to the bar at the top now if i go into performance there i can actually once again see my performance gauges i can see the consumption history and there you go we're actually higher now on the average consumption you also get the torque management system so it shows you which of the four wheels are getting the power and then the coolest one is the drag race menu which shows the times for your not to 100 not to 160 and then uh, to particular distances as well as braking as you can see there um, no stats for the moment but we'll get to that once again now if i head back up to this menu here on the control side of things you have the mirror dimmer and the screen controls and then settings lastly some more customizable options in terms of this infotainment screen the app tray, well that gives you access to a whole bunch of features that the Grecale's infotainment offers including as you can see there android auto the audio settings and a particular menu for the sonus faber audio system now if i draw your attention to the screen below here this in particular the main function is the air conditioning but you also have stuff like the air suspension controls the hill descent control as well automatic start stop as well as the clock those are all controlled from this screen here you also get heated seats for both driver and passenger as well as a heated steering wheel and if i touch the screen there i can actually move the fan speed just by touch as well as the temperature as well in the same sort of way just by moving up and down so that's pretty cool from that side though do be warned that a downside of doing that thing is you'll leave lots of fingerprints and trails all over this screen and the gloss blacks around as well the other thing is the clock so if i click on that i can actually adjust the digital clock up there between having a compass between showing what my pedals are doing a g-force meter is available as well but going back to the clock you can actually change the face as well to make it look more classic in style or a bit more trendy and more modern as well so there's lots of customization available even in this little clock up here now in front of the driver you have a 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster this is in its more traditional layout as you can see with the right side having the speedo left side having the rev counter and then in the middle of course you have the screen that you can customize what you want to view on there so if i press the button down there i can see the messages the average consumption as you can see there and then of course the speedometer and navigation and as well the um, long-term average so there is plenty to play around with there and you also have a button to exclusively change what you see on the left side gauge too so more customization available there taking a step back and looking at the steering wheel it's a full leather unit we've got the heated option ticked and that is accessible from the infotainment screen of course but coming back to this steering wheel you've got these gloss black buttons you've got your act adaptive cruise control on the right side all of those and then on the left side you've got your phone and your instrument cluster controls and then in typical sort of sporty maserati fashion you've got the engine start stop button down there and on the right side your drive mode button down there which if you flick around changes the driving modes of course and then you can tell that from your screen as well also worth noting that it's got these nice chunky aluminium paddle shifters behind and the indicator stocks and wiper stocks are actually finished in gloss black plastic as well so how about that for some obsession with the material now in the back of the Grecale that same leather theme continues here with more hand stitch leather upholstery in terms of space this seat is as far back as it can go I still have plenty of knee room plenty of headroom and plenty of footroom remember that the Grecale offers the best in class rear roominess best in class um, leg room and best in class rear passenger roominess so something like that as well there's three areas where it offers best in class space back here and the practicalities are good too you've got two cup holders space for your phone and you've got a 6.5 inch screen over there for your third zone climate control 
And with the Trofeo Premium Package Plus, you can also get heated rear seats for both passengers here. But enough with all that stuff. You remember that menu I showed you earlier with the drag times? I think it's time we go and fill in some of those blanks. Okay, so for launch control, you can only do it in Corsa mode which is actually just a spin of a dial here on the on the steering wheel. So go through Sport, go to Corsa, find a nice straight road that you're allowed to do 100 on, of course. And foot hard on the brake, foot hard on the accelerator. And then let go. Hang on, on the way through. <laughs> and that 3. gives 9. us 3.9 seconds, zero to 100. <laughs> it's brutal, it's brilliant, and it's so Italian and so much fun. This is just, I mean, the wind beneath your sails and just away it goes. It's, I know it's taking on the, the Porsche Macan, but it does it with an Italian flair. It's so good. And uh, honestly, the smile on my face and the way I feel like I want to vomit is great. Yeah, speaking of um, taking the wind out of your sails, I think, oh well, the wind and something, it has definitely taken the wind out of me, <laughs> to be honest, and I can see my, my last meal coming up shortly. <laughs> but in between that, the Grecale actually, on the comfort side of things, is just as well that these headrests are so soft because when you're testing out that savage acceleration, you do want some comfortable, a comfortable rest for your poor head and neck to fall back on when the Maserati is catapulting you forward like that. And the other thing, as you'll notice, we've even got Harry in the background. So that's four point, sorry, three point nine zero to hundred with three people on board. One of them being very sizable. It is really amazing how it can, it can do that. And that's just testament to that three liter twin turbo Netuno V6. I mean, harnessed for the MC20. That's a, you know, an engine of supercar proportions almost, or the delivery certainly is supercar like. So for Maserati to do a very Italian thing, as I'm familiar with my um, Alfa Romeo 147 GTA, Let's take our biggest engine that we have, our most powerful engine, and put it into the smallest car that we make, and let's see what happens. Well, I think it's safe to say the product is a really good one. <laughs> now I've got my breath back. Let's go through some of the practicalities. I mean, it is an SUV. It The ride height is actually elevated, of course. The But it it's actually, although it's, I mean, it sits in its own sort of category. We we were discussing this earlier, and I understand that it's going for best in class, but it sort of sits in its own class in terms of size. Uh, it's really easy to manage around town. It's got a, a great little, um, like the 360 cameras. Everything makes it very sizable. As, sorry, makes it very, I don't know, it, easy townable so it fits in the parking spots really well there's room for your um your groceries there's room for kids stuff to go everywhere it's that's the basic Ricale and then you whop this engine in which just has a beautiful sound and lovely note to it it's not the most efficient though <laughs> uh, no, I mean, with all this not sort of driving and, and doing some journalism <laughs> stuff of trying to get these not to 100 times, we've been, I think our efficiency is probably off the scale now, but before it was 20 liters per 100 K. So yeah, it does like petrol a lot, it's safe to say. Um, and judging by the noise that comes out of the exhaust, I think it's safe to say that we do like the sound of burning petrol as well. We do. Visibility, big, big windscreen up front, nice windscreen out the back. The A pillar is actually quite sizable. So if you're going through those tiny gorges that um, you know that are in the the Italian Alps, I think you're going to struggle to see around the corner. But uh, I think you'll make up for it when you go in the straights. And in the corners, I have to say that the chassis is so solid. It's it, we would 
doing a you know forecasted signposted 35 at probably the upper limits of the the speed limit around New Zealand so a nice sort of 95 around a 35 is not unachievable in this vehicle it's really exceptional especially around s bends where you go from one corner to the other and the shift of weight well there isn't much to it it stays so flat it keeps its composure and power is just instant to the wheels with the most traction it's just amazing but the compromise of that does mean the suspension is a bit on the firmer side and i think certainly on a slightly rougher country road like this we do feel it especially in corsa mode and i think harry back there I'll probably give you a little thumbs up because he can feel that firm ride coming through as well. And that's even in comfort. No, but realistically, the, the modes you're going to be liking are Sport and GT. And then when you get, do get the chance, Corsa, of course. And speaking of Corsa, things I have to correct Dave's poor use of the Italian language before. <laughs> where the designer who made or who con conceptualized the 3200 GT is Giugiaro rather than whatever um, insult that they've threw out. <laughs> but speaking of the Italian side of this car, it is very much unmistakably Maserati, unmistakably Italian, and notably it has its quirks. So stuff like the speaker covers, for example, which as I mentioned earlier are laser cut, but they are so sharp that you could probably grate cheese on them, you know, it, and your nails or, or your great. fingers, for yeah. example. The other thing is the parking sensors at the rear are incredibly sensitive. Equally, I don't care about the names of the designer. I don't care about the sensors. I care about how much fun this car is to drive. And it just is such a great car to drive. Absolutely. At the same time, as Dave said, look, all of those things just make a car characterful like this Gracale and I think you know it's something that you learn to love you learn to live with and you learn to laugh at as well that you know that makes the ownership experience of a car like this that much more unique that much more special and that much more Maserati like. The great thing about these paddles as well uh, particularly when you're trying to do a reverse or a, a three-point turn what you can do the the paddles which are obviously normally for changing up this terrific gearbox once you're doing a three-point turn they shortcut to a reverse and forward so you rather than ducking through and trying to find the right buttons on the the uh, automatic thing here you can actually just use your paddles so you can go forwards backwards just by using your paddles I think it's quite ingenious it is ingenious and just like that dual sunroof above which I didn't mention earlier but especially for the passengers at the back lets in a heap of light and makes the whole cabin feel really airy and really light in general despite the fact that everything else the leather the plastics around and the roof line are all black just by opening up that sunroof it feels like a different car inside here it's also safe too there it does come with the suite of safety aids and driving aids that actually even makes you i think it keeps an eye on you as well to make sure you're driving well Ugh, that's never going to work with me So there you have it, the Maserati Gracale Trofeo, how's my Italian? Um, it's ferocious when it needs to be. I mean, if you've got the money, this is the one to go for. It is sedate if you really need it to be and just terrifyingly fast when you want it to be. It's solid on the road and uh, you can tell i'm a big fan my heart's still racing it uh, i really enjoy it it's got italian flair and trident badge and uh and that dangly bit that in your throat that makes you want to go oh because it's awesome in a way this is sort of like i think the resurgence of maserati maserati's character should i say is taking those powerful engines putting them into their practical cars if you like and giving us something like this something that can be so normal but also so vicious i think it's pretty special now i've got to see if i can beat that 3.9 anyway 
thanks for watching make sure you subscribe and um we'll see if we can revive harry in the back anyway see you later ciao <laughs>